Oh, we'll move on from the, the football, from the playing <laughs> right. football and accepting uh, £20 notes. Uh, you go into the world of coaching with Queen's Park yeah. and, 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 and not long after, you take the managerial road to Aberdeen. Aberdeen. That's 1965. Uh, 60, that's right. Is this, and I've always wondered about this, is this where the initial foundations for the later success of Aberdeen, i.e. in the 70s, undoubtedly, were laid. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. I, I'll say that without any Because it, it's all laid at Fergie's door, but, yeah. I mean, you know... Aberdeen. When I went to Aberdeen, if I hadn't gone to Aberdeen, Aberdeen would not be a football club today. Now, that's a big statement. I'm saying that because when I got there, I thought, what in the name of fortune? Said, what have I come to? You know, I'm I'm eyeing up about thirty staff. You know, thirty players in the, the bottom of the league, nearly relegated, on the road to being relegated. I thought, you know, after I'd taken the job, when I, I, I kind of sat down and you know, I said, hey, what have I done here? I've got all these players, and I've got to assess those guys. I'd about, I'm not sure, uh, but eight games, was it, or something, b before the season finished? Very few, anyway, for Aberdeen to stay up. And I thought, in the name of first, what have I got here? So what I've got to do, you know, I've got to sort it out the ones that are no bad, and I've got to get them and I've got to make them believe that they're better players than they actually are to get us out of this situation. I thought, right, I'm going to get this club sorted out here. Yeah. And I did, and I worked, and I got Bobby Calder, who was a great wee man. He was a, a scout, as such, in those days. But half of Glasgow knew Bobby. He was a great wee guy, and he worked on the railway, and all the railway men you them all the porters, the, everybody in the railway. And they would phone, say, hey, Bobby, here is a good laddie playing for so-and-so. We never look at him. So you know what I used to do? <laughs> and, the, and the start the training, I'd say to Bobby, get a carriage filled with laddies and bring them up here, Glasgow boys. Because the Glasgow boys were white, you know, they were sharp. This was my philosophy. I always thought... If there were two guys running across the road and there was a tram car coming, the wee Glasgow guy would get across before the Edinburgh. <laughs> that was what I used to think, you know. <laughs> and that's what we used to do. We used to get a lot of laddies up from Glasgow and we'd put them up with uh, this great friend, not a friend, a great Aberdeen supporter he had a hotel, Mr. Esselman, and he had a huge place at the back of his hotel and we would put, he would put the camp beds down and the laddies would sleep there and they'd come down to training. And on the, the Friday after the training was finished, I'd go up to the hotel and I'd give them all a fiver to spend for the weekend. They wouldn't have called the king their uncle, all these laddies. <laughs> That's how I used to operate. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a certain acerbic side to you. You were certainly in the front foot with, with directors, yeah. players and members of my profession. Yeah. Would that be fair to say? Yes, yes, yes. You don't, you don't mind uh, being no, accused of this? No. Didn't, didn't one unfortunate director once take his dog to training? Yes. And what did you do? You don't want me to repeat it, do you? Well, <laughs> you know, as much as can be broadcast. Well, we're training and everybody had to concentrate, all the players, you know. And I'm working with these players and I'm working on a fault that they have during the game, this particular boy. The next thing is this dog runs across and I hear somebody shouting, Fifi, Fifi. I said, I'll effing Fifi you. I says, get, oh, and I went crazy. Somebody says, that's Mr. Spain's dog. I said, Mr. Spain. Said, Mr. Spain should have his dog in a lead. I, I don't want anybody to interrupt me when I'm working. Oh, Fifi. No, because see, I, I, I used to get involved, and, and the players, and this is, they'll tell you, I had this image of being a hard, but I was a very fair person, 
and I would take them and I'd, I've got to get them have confidence in me, you know. Yeah. And this I could do. I could yeah. get them in the palm of my hand there. Yeah. Oh, I know, they love you to this day, yeah. Eddie. They yeah. love you to this day. But tell me, did you did you want Swisker Joe Harper? Yeah. What was that for? Joey, I signed Joey for Aberdeen. Joey liked to go out in the, you know, he, the was, he, he was the king, as you well mm -hmm. know. He, he, he was the king in Aberdeen. I used to tell the players, I uh, see, there's one street in Aberdeen, Union Street. Now, when you walk along Union Street, you perhaps don't know anybody, but know, yeah. the people in Union Street, there's a big percentage of them, know you, because this is just one city, there's no other place that you can hide, you know? So this I always, I always got this home to them. Don't you ever let Aberdeen Football Club down. You know, so Magar and Rejoy. And Rejoy could be cheeky at times. So I said, oh, cheeky, Joy. That was it finished. And did you? Yeah. Did you hit him? I hit him. And hard. Mm -hmm. well, he rattled up against some furniture there. I shouldn't have done it, I know that. But that's life. Tell me about your relationship with Jock Steen at Celtic. Steen? It, it was scarcely made in heaven. I never had a lot of time for so I was never scared of Steve, no way. Did you say anything? Uh, eventually, I got on quite well with him. When I went to Aberdeen, playing Celtic, now they'd gone 20-odd games, unbeaten. Now I've got a lot of crap. I've got a lot of young, you know, laddies. Uh, anyhow, up comes Steen. With most of his Lisbon Lions, you know, they're all there. Hey, Jim Craig, Gemmell, Simpson, the goal, McNeil, pff, eh, eh, all that lot, you know, Johnson and that lot, and we do them. Now he was up in the director's box on his side, and I was up my, my side, you know. Anyway, when the result, when the game finished up, well, I was down sharp, you know. Of course, you know, Steen had a, a, a bad foot, and he used to clip, clop, clip. So I hear this, I, I go along the hall, do you remember the hallway? I do. I go along the hallway to the dressing room and I hear the clip, clop, clip, clop. So I thought, slow down. So I slowed down and I waited till they come up. I said, how do you like it, big man? Oh, I said, you, I said, I'm not scared of you, Steen. And your counterpart at Ibrox at this time was what I said, you, you don't bother me, you two, you one other, you know. But eventually, things smoothed out. And I, I, I worked for him for a while. In well, Scotland. I, I, uh, with the Scottish side, you know, for mm -hmm. a wee while. Mm -hmm. Eventually I got on all right with him, but he had no time for coaching, nor did Waterloo Rangers. They wouldn't allow any of their players to go to the coaching course. When I was an avid, coaching person, I loved coaching, and I felt this was the, the, the start of the new era in British football. Yeah. So you, you, you were the pathfinder in that? Yeah, I was the first person, the first coach in Scotland to train with a ball. Ask any of the boys that were at hand with me, Niall Hopper, uh, uh, David Miller, Bobby Clark, Alan Ingram, you know, they'll tell you. Then when I went up to Aberdeen, that was it. They couldn't believe it. Everyone had a ball. Yeah. I phoned Peter Craigmile, the great referee, referee. Mm -hmm. had a sports shop in Aberdeen. I said, right, I'll phone Peter Craigmile. It was his son who was doing the business and give him the, the sale. So I phoned. Oh, they didn't have five balls, never mind 25, you know. So, oh, I said, I'm sorry, I've got to get football. So I phoned Thorntons in Edinburgh. I knew the boss in there, Big Jock Steedman. I said, Jock, I want 30, 25, 30 footballs, any kind, but get them up. They were up in the train the next day. <laughs> all second, you know, seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, something wrong with them, they used to keep them. So they were all seconds, that was it. 